Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back once again with another reaction. Of course, we are continuing the Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes is Season 2, Episode 8, The Ballad of Beta Ray Bill, which, that's really exciting because I'm, I'm just happy that Beta Ray Bill's in the freaking show because, like, there are so many characters they could be introducing, and they've been introducing a lot of characters, and I didn't expect Beta Ray Bill. I didn't, but then again... Thor is not with the Avengers. As far as I can remember, I, I'm thinking, trying to remember back on season two, Thor hasn't interacted with the Avengers yet. Like, throughout season one, of course, he was there, but I think he's stuck. Uh, so I feel like there's something going on here with Beta Ray Bill, so I'm really excited to see what they do with this because he's a very interesting character. I think they're actually going to introduce him maybe in Thor Love and Thunder. I'm not really sure. I'm surprised he hasn't popped up officially yet in the MCU, but... He's a very uh, powerful character, a very interesting character, and the fact is it's called the Ballad of Beta Ray Bill, so I'm not really sure what that exactly means about the Ballad of, but maybe he'll pop up more after this because I feel like the character, you know, this is a weird design, a horse head. I'm not really sure what they were thinking, but it's Thor, and in the mythology of Thor, there's a lot of interesting things. Like, they've already showed some really weird stuff involving Thor, of course, with Loki and everything in Season 1. So, Beta Ray Bill is not too far off in terms of what they've already done with the Thor character. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this kind of intro a little bit shorter. I'm ready to get into this episode and check it out and see what they do with Beta Ray Bill because, you know, my hope is that they'll probably knock it out of the park because they've always knocked out all these characters out of the park in terms of their portrayal and what they do with them. So, here we go, guys. The Ballad of Beta Ray Bill. What the fuck? Serta, right? Oh, by himself. <laughs> Thor's by himself. Heimdall says there is still no sign of the Enchantress. It is not Amora, I think, God. Hmm. The Avengers are more than capable of defending their world against her. Not anymore. There was a mortal. But she's not even there anymore. For somehow, Serta has found a way to hide from my sight. Well, it's Surtur. I would think he could do that. No, I will deal with this ship. Is this where Beta Ray Bill is? Maybe. Surely. Actually, look at the planet. Demon breed energy signature detected. Fire. That's Beta Ray Bill, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm, it, it's definitely him. That is not it's not possible. <laughs> but it is. Your weapon is mighty, demon. I do not fear Mjolnir's power. Then fear me! That wasn't smart. What is that? <laughs> That's not good. Exactly. Classification Demon Breed. Demon Breed. Demon Breed. He mistook us for Surtur's creatures. Perhaps to one such as him, all who wield Asgardian magic look the same. Until the Demon Breed came. The demons were relentless. Stealing Interesting way of saying it, but score. still demons. We were unprepared for such an attack. Only to find ourselves pursued by the demon breed. The fall of our world wasn't enough for them. So mm. we hide. Wow. Until we can find a safe haven for my people. The enchantment allows any who are worthy to wield it. Until now, there has never been another. Now there is. I have tested my might against Thor's. Odin himself has sent us with Odin. Odin promised his protection. I held the shard of Surtur's soul at Odin's request. And now my people have paid bitterly for it. There is precious little blue metal left. Mm. But to have the Odin son in my debt, it is 
it's worth it. What say you okay. He said in my debt. Press the store. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. But it comes it came at a price though, but it's awesome. Uh The demon queen. I mean she is under Surter, so it makes sense that she's called the Demon Queen now. I mean This is awesome. <laughs> I would hope that Beta Ray Bill can come back before the show ends to kind of meet the other Avengers. Okay, so Surtur is controlling her. She broke for a second. Working together. Oh. Yeah, he said there's a lot of them. So, I mean, it makes sense that there's so many of them. Dang. Nope, nothing. I mean, I'm assuming she has the power of Surtur since she's like full fire base now it seems in terms of her abilities okay okay it's not the end for you come on okay together maybe it'll help maybe looks like it Is she gone? Ah, of course. We must find him. We must discover why he seeks the Corbinites, else the final battle may consume us all. I did not understand what it meant to make a connection with someone that needed you, like the mortals needed you. Hmm. Truly, the word now she understands. Heroes never ceases to surprise me. Forging away. Well, there you guys have it, the Ballad of Beta Ray Bill. So, a lot of things happened in this episode. Some, I was really surprised about the whole Surtur thing. Like, I, I was like, well, in the little intro thing, kind of like previously on, I was like, okay, we have Surtur Enchantress. The last time we saw Enchantress, of course, Surtur had her as a year now under my control, or whatever he said. We saw a brief glimpse of him, but I'm like, are they going to pop up in this episode? So, they technically did. Surtur did at the end, but it was more of Enchantress, but... Uh, we'll get to that in a second about how that really ties in. That, that's really cool. The cool reveal, the cool new suit, like, you know, new design for the character. But, um, okay, so we have Odin. We have Clancy Brown back because the last time we saw Odin a couple episodes ago, they didn't have Clancy Brown, so they just had him. But they had Thor and, um, I forget his name, uh, was, was talking. And Odin was just kind of, like, walking away. Like, okay, they don't have they don't have Clancy Brown for Odin, so they're just kind of using Thor uh, and the other character. I forget his name. Um to talk. So now they got him back. And so Surtur, like they're really pushing the Surtur angle, which from like I was saying in the reaction, I don't know if it's in there for the edited, but I'll say this here for everybody to hear. I, someone had mentioned that they, they don't actually get to the Surtur storyline because the show ends. I'm not really sure about that. Like, you know, I don't, to me, when I see it or if I don't see it and when the show ends, then I'll know for a fact this stuff was, you know, because it seems like there's a lot of stuff they're setting up and, you know, it feels like they're not going to cover everything. And so that's really unfortunate if it's, if it is indeed the case. But I hope that maybe we see more of Surtur and stuff before then at least to kind of help more of that storyline because this was really, really cool. So there's a ship that, of course, the demons, as they call demon spawns or whatever, were following. And so Thor goes to this ship thinking it's a part of Surtur's, you know, demons or whatever like his you know uh forces turns out it's beta ray bill by himself protecting his people and he lifts the hammer now i should have suspected that just because you got beta ray bill you're gonna show he's gonna lift the hammer but i didn't think that maybe they would do that maybe they'll save it for later if there's another episode where he pops up but they had hinted that he's gonna be in the final battle with Surtur, which i feel like if they don't get to before the show ends then you know we don't see him but i would hope we see him again based off of what they did with him in this episode because they highlighted because that explosion we saw and we saw the ship flying away and the demons following we saw the end of his planet 
and the end of all of his people, except for the ones that are in a cold sleep on that ship he's protecting. Um, and they had to explain he went through modifications and all this kind of stuff to become Beta Ray Bill, the protector of his people, the, you know, what he is now. So him fighting Thor was pretty interesting, picking up the hammer. I knew once the hammer was behind him and he turned around and looked at it, he's going to pick it up and it's going to work for him. Um, and so he gets brought back to Asgard by accident, but they figure out that what he's seeing in terms of a glow around them, which we finally saw in his perspective, the glow around Odin and Thor, and he was assuming that these are all a part of these, you know, this, the same creatures, these demons that basically invaded his planet that was a part of Surtur's forces. And so they finally came to an understanding and understanding that there's a mistake going on here. Thor is not somebody being sent after, you know, being sent to kill you by Surtur. And they create a Thor-esque suit for Beta Ray Bill and give him Stormbreaker. Now, what the issue is, is now Thor is in debt to, I think his name's Dimitri, I think his name, or it's something. I, I, I They introduced him in Infinity War, but they had him here, and they really explained how he was upset with Odin and them for not coming to his aid or his people's aid, and he's like, I should have sided with the, the Frost Giants, maybe even Loki. I'm like, okay, that's low. But still, Thor is in some sort of debt with him, which is not good because now it's not up to Thor to decide when to help. It's up to him to decide when he wants to call in that favor for Thor. So Thor is now in debt. But now also Thor, also Beta Ray Bill is offering his services. Basically, he's in debt for Thor. So who knows if that'll ever come about again. I'm not really sure. But interesting how instead of just giving Beta Ray Bill a weapon, the Stormbreaker with a suit, there's a price to it. Which, I mean, it makes better storytelling if there's a price to it than just, well, here you go. You can have this for free. No worries. Um, so... They fight the demons, and then who pops up is Enchantress, but not Enchantress, what they call the Demon Witch, or the Demon the demon Queen. Because Sif later said, go after the witch, because she only thinks of Enchantress as the witch, the Enchantress. But she's now the Demon Queen, or whatever. So, basically, Surtur is using her to create his forces while he's off busy doing other stuff, like basically forging a, a giant sword. Um... I thought it was interesting that they had Enchantress kind of under Surtur's control, but at two different points, she broke from it. I didn't think she was going to die. I also didn't think she was going to get saved either because I feel like it's too easy. Because the last time we saw her, she was, of course, going after the Masters of Evil for what they did to her. Basically, she was going through the Masters of Evil to get to Zemo, who betrayed her. Then the last thing we saw of her, which was in the previously on in this episode, was Surtur basically going to be using her for his own gain and basically she's under control of him which Zemo was attempting to do with her earlier and now she is under control of somebody which is of course Surtur so using her to create the forces and and basically talking through her at one point it's it's interesting at that point I kind of knew you know there's no way it's going to be an easy thing and even if they were to save Enchantress you can't trust her. Like, there's been so many things they've done with her in the show in terms of what they did with season one with her and Loki and all the things she did with the Masters of Evil and all that. And then with this, and now working for Surtur, even though she's under the control, she cannot be trusted. So even if Thor and Beta Ray Bill did save her, I think it would have been too soon, but at that point, you would have to just put her in some sort of jail that she can't get out of. Because, like Loki, because you can't trust her. Like, you, even if she's like, I don't want to be under a sort of control, but you still are a bad person. You're still evil. Like, I don't see you changing after all the things they've done with the character. I think she's irredeemable in terms of that aspect. You can feel sorry for her for being under control of somebody like this, like Surtur's using her for his own gain. I feel bad for her in that aspect, but I don't feel bad for her to the point where you, if you rescue her, then she's free to go. Because she has proven time and time again that she cannot be trusted. She's a bad person, and things are not good when she's around and about. So, it's unfortunate Surtur has got her under control, but yeah. Uh, I like the design, though. Really cool, the fire and everything. And I like how when she sent fire to Beta Ribbon and Thor, they reflected it, and then it landed behind her, uh, them, her, them, and then the fire was there, and then it disappeared in more demons. So, it was like she was just creating demons nonstop. When Beta Ray Bill said, there's a lot of them, he was not kidding. Um... The fighting was really good, and uh, I think that Bay Ray Bill was awesome, greatly portrayed. I think Steve Blum was voicing him. 
uh, but I like the character a lot, and I hope we see him again because I think you know Beta Ray Bill is a really interesting character. I think they handled him pretty well in terms of giving him a really interesting backstory about why his why he's doing what he's doing, why he is the way he is with the modifications, as he was mentioning, and why he fought Thor, and ultimately why he's doing what he's doing about protecting his people. It's a very touching story. And then, of course, he is on the side of good, so that's a good thing, because he could have easily gone bad with his abilities, essentially. But, uh, yeah, so now he has Stormbreaker, dressed kind of like Thor, and he is uh, willing to help whenever the case may be in terms of helping Thor. So that's a good thing. We need him on our side. So uh, overall, really good episode. I like the fact that it focused mainly on... It, it really only focused on Thor and stuff, but it focused just on Asgard and stuff like that, just to kind of focus on um, that and, of course, leading up to more of the Surtur stuff, because beforehand... We've only seen Thor in bits and pieces, but hardly in the show up to this point. So I'm glad we had a full episode dedicated to him. And the intro just had Thor, which is pretty cool. Like, like all the Avengers standing, it was just Thor by himself. Indicating Thor only episode. So what did you guys think of the episode, uh, Beta Ray, uh, the ballad of Beta Ray Bill? Whatever thoughts you have, let me know in the conversation below, guys. I will talk to you guys soon.